This is James Lane from We Are Change Oklahoma. In this video, we're going to provide evidence that the official story of Taryn Sheiky's death being a suicide is false. For more information, you can go to tytruth.com. This short film will give you a glimpse into the mystery of the brutal torture murder of Sergeant Taryn Sheiky and address several of the unanswered questions that exist surrounding the horrific circumstances of his passing on May 8, 1996. Sergeant Yeke is remembered as a loving husband, father, brother, and son, and highly respected seven-year veteran of the Oklahoma City Police Department. Uh, he was an awesome older brother. Um, we used to hang out and um, do fun things together, and he just was always about fun, but he also was about his work, too, and he was very serious about being a cop. We're on location at the Oklahoma City National Memorial on the west side, 30 yards away from the west wall, which marks the spot where Officer Terrence Yickey, a sergeant with the Oklahoma City Police Department, pulled up in his black and white squad car less than 10 minutes after the multiple explosions emanated from the AP Murrah building on the morning of April 19, 1995. Mr. Yickey would pull out eight survivors that day, the first being Mr. Tom Hall, a GSA employee, and set them less than 20 yards to my right going back for seven other survivors. He worked tirelessly over three and a half hours. The fact that Officer Yeke was able to approach the crime scene in such a quick manner without protective breathing gear, as was the case with other, several other civilians coming from surrounding businesses and other search and rescue personnel, clearly shows that ammonium nitrate and fuel oil was not used as the principal agent explosive to take apart the AP Murrah building. If ANFA was used, there would have been a heavy cloud of nitric gas hanging over the area, and all of the search and rescue people, including Sergeant Yeke, would have been buckling over, becoming violently ill. That simply did not happen. So that calls into question what actually blew up the AP Murrah building. Sergeant Yeke had witnessed things during his response to the bombing, which did not agree with the official version of events touted by the national media and law enforcement at that time. He was in the process of collecting evidence which supported and documented the inconsistencies he witnessed the morning of the bombing at the scene itself. According to the Yankee family members, Terrence Yankee was to meet a colleague in the restaurant directly behind me the morning of May 8 of 1996. He was to discuss records that he had collected regarding the, the Oklahoma City bombing, which were stored in a storage facility about an hour's drive north of here. Terrence Yankee never made it to that restaurant in El Reno because on the morning of May 8 of 1996, at 7 a.m., his vehicle was found in a spot just behind me by a resident living up this road no more than a mile away. It was from 7 a.m. until 6 p.m. that the car would sit here, full of blood, and according to Terry's sister, Vicki, there was actually blood in between the window panes in the back of the vehicle. In addition to the blood, there was an unidentified knife found in the bottom of the glove box, along with razor blades, the car keys, and the windows rolled up tight. The car was locked. Terry's body was nowhere to be found. Until later that evening, between 7 and 8 p.m., OCPD helicopters, in addition to the Canadian County Sheriff, as well as El Reno Police, would have a large search party looking for Terry's body no more than a half a mile from where we're standing. It is important to note how, exactly how, Yankee is supposed to have killed himself. He was said to have slit his wrists and neck, causing him to nearly bleed to death in his car and then miraculously climb over a barbed wire fence. He then was purported to have walked over one and a quarter mile distance through a nearby field, eventually shooting himself in the head at an unusual angle. Startlingly, no weapon was found at the scene of the body, no investigation was conducted, no fingerprints taken, and no interviews with family members or friends were conducted to try and determine why Yeke would have been suicidal, or if he had in fact been suicidal at all. Instead, the conclusion that Yeke's death was a suicide was reached immediately without an autopsy. Far from being suicidal, Sergeant Yeke was in the process of achieving some major life goals. He was scheduled to be interviewed a final time with the FBI in Irving, Texas. He was planning on working for the FBI in Dallas, and moving there with his sister and brother-in-law. Furthermore, Sergeant Yeke, a Gulf War I veteran who had served as an MP for two years in Saudi Arabia, was also a seven-year veteran of the OCPD 
and had just been promoted to sergeant, November of 1995. Several weeks before his death, he had been awarded the key to the city of El Reno, Oklahoma, for his heroism during the aftermath of the Oklahoma City bombing. Additionally, Yeke had reconciled with his ex-wife, and plans were set to remarry her shortly after his move to Dallas, Texas. Despite all of this, Yeke was living under constant scrutiny for his refusal to go along with official versions of the events during and after the Oklahoma City bombing. And because of his refusal to change his story about what he saw that fateful day, he was the target of horrific persecution from his brothers in law enforcement, up to and including Oklahoma City Police Department Chief Sam Gonzalez, his commanding officer, Lieutenant John Randall, an alleged good friend, Jim Ramsey, and several others on the force at the time. Although he was looking forward to his new job with the FBI, Yeke was described by his family as a man who was also living in great fear at this time and who was preoccupied with the harassment he was being subjected to on a daily basis. When Yeke showed up at his older sister's home the evening before his alleged suicide, he was physically ill. When she attempted to take him to the emergency room, Yeke would not allow this because he told her, they can find me there. Yeke never told her who they were in an attempt to protect her. I'm Terry's oldest sister, and uh, he was brought to my, ho my home uh, prior to his death. Uh, he was ill, looked like he had been in some type of shock or something. I had given him something to eat. Um, he didn't do well eating. He went back to sleep. Uh, he woke up maybe a couple hours later. Um, walked across to my living room floor a couple of times, convinced my prior husband that uh, he was fine and that he needed to get back to Oklahoma City because he had dare class the next morning. Um, the next morning, uh, Officer Randall called me and was looking for him, said he didn't report to work. Uh, did I know where he was? And of course I did not know where he was. The day went through, I called a lot of his friends and tried to find Terry, and I couldn't find Terry. About 6 o'clock that evening, um, some detectives came to my home, and they told me they had found Terry dead and that he had taken his life. At approximately 10 o'clock at night, the phone rang. I had just put my grandkids to bed, and... Excuse me. I could hear my daughter screaming in the background. And I knew something terribly was wrong. And my son-in-law said, Mom, they found Terry. He's dead. So I proceeded to uh, tell him that I'm on my way. And this officer, Detective Mullinex, got on the phone. He said, ma'am, this is Detective Mullinex. Do not try to drive. We will send a car for you. And I agreed. At 1 o'clock in the morning, I was still sitting in my home in Enid with friends, waiting for someone to pick me up. And I never got there. When we talked with police officers, they gave us many stories. And they told us that we looked at too much TV. I screamed out, he didn't take his life. Somebody murdered my brother. Um, at that point, I then decided to call his former wife to ask her to let her know that he had, been, he had passed. And from that point on, um, I was told that he did take his life and that he was a big guy and, and what I knew was wrong. Terrence Shakey was laid to rest at this spot on Saturday, May 11, 1996. It was also here that his mother was presented with the Medal of Valor from the Oklahoma City Police Department at a graveside ceremony and full 21-gun salute to honor guard. Terry's name was announced at the end of the Medal of Valor presentation ceremony later that evening, and he was the only recipient given a standing ovation at the ceremony. There were lies told about everything that happened, 
and I would like for the world to know that his life was just taken away from him for nothing. Right. There exactly. is, there's a ceiling on what they I would mean, pay on a police officer. Oh, yeah. So is this not well, more than, it's this it's got to be more than just that? Because otherwise, excuse the expression, give these dummies that money and let them get off our case. No, when they open this up, it's going to be more.